a time to weep and a time to laugh. And right now it is time to laugh. Let's talk about it with the skit guys, Tommy Woodard and Eddie James on Steve Brown, etc. He's an old white guy, an author, broadcaster, and seminary professor who's sick of religion. And he's brought friends. Please welcome Steve Brown, etc. And this is Steve Brown, etc. Although technically uh, today it is just etc. Steve, the aforementioned old white guy, is away. Is he away at family camp? I don't know. He didn't say. Possibly. I don't know that he's not there. No I am your, way. No. Is he's done that? <laughs> <laughs> Only if he would can he take be, an RV there. Would he be oh. teaching or attending? Oh, yeah, I don't think he's goodness. much for like events. He's a stayer at homer kind of guy, <laughs> and we love him for it. I am your humble uh, pinch hitter guest host, Matthew Porter. Um, our producer, you just heard from him, Jinx. He's working hard in his little glass booth. Jinx reminds our recent 2022 graduates to live, laugh, love. That's very, uh, it's very touching, Jinx. I don't expect that from you. It's on the kitchen wall. And, Is it? Yeah, I just... <laughs> No just judgment. Take, just, just take it from there. My wife knows what she's doing. I no judgment. It. Paste it. Go. Our video director and one man IT department, John Myers, is in his tech bunker. And you can have his original Nintendo game controller when you buy it from his cold dead hands. <laughs> <laughs> not much call for the Charlton Heston impression these days. I liked it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to tell you how much time I actually worked on that. It would be embarrassing. <laughs> Dr. George Bingham is the president of Key Life. George, actually speaking of graduates, just gave a commencement speech uh, to some graduates titled, You May Be Forgiven, But Your Student Debt, mm, Yeah, not so much. It's not going to be forgiven. <laughs> and Kathy Wyatt, of course, is the soft, feminine side of the program here at Key Li- Camp Key Life. She's our camp, camp director. Key Life. And she's usually, uh, usually a pretty ca- happy camper. Usually. Unless one of us messes up. Guys, I am so so excited, genuinely, for our to for, to talk to our guest today. Um, it combines three of my great passions. We'll talk about what those are in just a second, but I want to get right to it. Our guests today are Tommy Woodard and Eddie James. You probably know them as the Skit Guys. They have been writing and performing skits together since their high school days, and have traveled the world performing at events churches and conferences when they're not doing skit guys stuff tommy serves as a teaching pastor in oklahoma and eddie volunteers at his church in texas tommy and eddie have a new feature comedy film that was just released in theaters and it is called family camp guys welcome hey thank you for thank having you. us man Thanks. i i i'm so stoked uh, the, the the three things i love um, filmmaking, writer, director, producer. So like the whole, the whole process of producing a film is, is, is very close to my heart. Um, comedy. I love comedy. Uh, that's actually how I first got, uh, involved with, uh, key life, like back in 99 writing comedy bits, wow. like touched by a hell's angel. I was paid American dollars to write that bit, <laughs> uh, different scene back then. We had three hours a day live to cover. So that's how I, snug in and in church drama uh my my, my late uh mother-in-law was a church drama director and can't tell you how many sketches that we wrote together and performed in very close to my heart and you guys have brought all of these things together in a really unique way in this film and i want to i want to get into the film we do have a full hour so you know we can kind of you know uh, pace this thing I, I would love to hear a little bit how you guys started uh well- Go for it, Ed. No, you you started. You go for it. Go for it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, it, listen, our our whole story kind of begins with a youth pastor lying to me. Uh, he he asked me to go on a mission trip. He and I wasn't going to go. I went to church about once a month, and uh, he lied to me and said, "Hey, we need someone to do drama on this mission trip." And uh, I was so arrogant. I thought, well, if God needs drama, he needs me. And uh, and so uh, he had no plans for drama on the mission trip. But I said yes. And so he had to find a monologue for me to do. I went on the trip. It was a life changer for me. And I came back home, as most kids do from a youth mission trip, way too Jesus-y. And uh, my buddy, Eddie, uh, who is a year younger than me, he had one more year left of school, uh, we had plans to go be on Saturday Night Live. That was the goal. 
Drive my red 81 Chevette from Oklahoma to New York. It would have broke down in Little Rock, but that's okay. We didn't know that. <laughs> and uh, so instead of that, all of a sudden, I want to do something different. And he's trying to figure out what's wrong with me, you know? And so uh, then one day I, I invited him to church. You want to pick it up from there, Ed? Uh, sure. Yeah. We, uh, we started uh, sitting in the youth group and just making fun of the youth pastor and one day he just said, Hey guys, why don't you start using your powers for good instead of evil? And, and we were, well, what does that mean? He goes, well, why don't you start doing skits every Wednesday night? And I mean, and he really meant it. And we're like, well, okay. And not that it was skits for God, but it was just, you know, hubris. It was just a bunch of ego going, well, of course, let's do it. You know? Um, so, and the skits in the eighties, um, were, were a little cheesy for, for a high schooler. You know, I was like, ah, you know, Jesus was introduced very quickly. Jesus was like line three, you know, because why are you doing a skit? You had to get to Jesus so quick. And then there's usually scripture that would be followed up right after that. So, um, for however it worked, Tommy and I just decided we didn't want to do those skits. And we just started stealing stuff from Saturday Night Live and trying to make it Christian. Very hard to do. Very hard to do. But, <laughs> hard to redeem but, those kids. <laughs> but we did. Uh, we would, and then before we knew it, we were traveling all over Oklahoma um, for gas money and a chicken dinner, and and doing, you know, Hans and Franz and Church Lady and Phil Donahue and the Liar Guy, and just trying to figure out how to pop scripture in there and make it all work. And that's really, that was kind of our comedy club, so to speak, of just trying out, uh, you know, how we would do things. And uh, it just kind of evolved from there, from youth pastors still being able to do it. People would invite us to do stuff until it turned into a, a full-time job. I love it. I love it. I had a, a good buddy, Dave, in high school, and it, there's no parallel because they'd be like, hey, Dave, do you want to, um, you know how we snuck in on campus last Friday night and put a Burger King crown at the top of the, do you want to just kind of do that like forever together? We, it, 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 our experiences are very uh, different in that. Yeah, sense. Very similar that's awesome. <laughs> in that's the youth awesome. group sense. Um, that's a great era, by the way, if you're going to steal from Saturday night live, that's a, uh, I mean, it's Phil Hartman so kind of era. I mean, Oh gosh, it was so good. Yes. Yeah. Good sources. Yeah. Like, like you just said, yeah, Phil Hartman did Phil Donahue and Phil Donahue was huge, though yeah. some people may not know. But I mean, oh, my goodness, church lady. I mean, so it was just it was just perfect to just figure out great high energy comedy. And then, you know, wherever we went, we still kind of do the same thing with our videos. And, you know, it was like, OK, what's the theme? What are you all talking about? And then we just try to keep we just look up scripture and just tweak it and put it in there according to the characters. So. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was yeah. very fascinating. That's great. Mm -hmm. Every good artist, they're early on steals. They don't know it. You're stealing. I wrote a yeah. short script, a short short story in uh, middle school. Had an uncanny resemblance to uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's some uh, scholarly debate about, you know, where, where this is sourced from. But yeah, I get you. I feel you. So you guys are, are riding, traveling around. What's kind of the next phase? What did that look like? Where it evolved? to two to from there. Yeah. So, you know, as Eddie said, we were traveling around Oklahoma doing skits for gas money and a chicken dinner that went into Texas and then the Southern States. And, and all of a sudden we start traveling a lot. Uh, fast forward the tape to around 2003 and churches start using videos in their services. And uh, we connected with a guy who could put what we did on video. And so we started making these, you know, three to five minute short films that churches would use, you know, and that became really the the the, the primary part of our our uh, our ministry, you know. So we'd still do live shows, but we're making all these short videos. With all along, there was always that dream to do something bigger, but it just seemed impossible, you know. Yeah, beautiful. And um, curious, like, what is your writing style, Ben, or, or creating? Do you guys? start with an idea and improv it out what's uh, and has that process changed any through the years or, or or is it pretty much still the same you know it's pretty much still been the same i'm i'm really kind of blown away by that um we would in high school we would meet in a sunday school room and we would hear about the theme on a you know whatever our youth pastor was talking about cuz there was no downloadable sermon so you had to create it your own you he had know. to use the bible he, back then he had to use yeah <laughs> so days, my friends <laughs> there was not anything to download uh, so um but 
And it really was, well, you say this, I say this, you say this, I say this, you say this. Okay, 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 now let's do it again. And we, and that's really how we would get up there and throw it together. And um, if you go to skitguys.com and if it's a skit guy script, not, not a narrative, not something that a church would use on a video, mm-hmm. but if it was one of our live skits and you see a script, it's usually the last thing. Scripts have always been the last thing more than the first thing when it comes to Tommy and I. Cause then we can, you know, we tweak it and perfect it and, you know, and then, then we make a script out of it. So we would, we would kind of go backwards as far as the live stuff and still to this day, that's what we do. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. In, in watching uh, the videos, it's the, the, the chemistry, the timing almost re- I recalls. I haven't seen key and peel cause I'm Christian, but if I had, right. I would say, <laughs> I, amen. It, amen. I'm definitely not sending a, a Ron sketch at all, but if I had, I would say you guys patter back and forth. The timing, it speaks to um, uh, a level of trust and experience that you guys have built up for a long time. You know, you're not just coming out of the gate with that. It's a great Thank compliment. You. Yeah. Thank you guys, so much. Excellent. Guys, we're talking to Tommy Woodard and Eddie James. They have uh, built a career out of having a lot of fun. That is remarkable in itself. But then they made a movie which is any movie that gets made, as we talk about here all the time, is a miracle. And on the other side of the break, we are going to get into family camp. We're going to learn about uh, the stars. We're going to learn about how this came together. We're going to learn about where, uh, where this, how this thing came together, what it's all about, where it was shot. I love all the details. Guys, you want to stick around for this. You are listening to Steve Brown, et cetera. We will be right back. Thank you for joining us on Steve Brown, etc. We are talking to the skit guys, Tommy Woodard and Eddie James. Their new comedy just opened in theaters. It is called Family Camp. Check out the trailer and get your tickets at familycampmovie.com and find out more from Tommy and Eddie at skitguys.com. Uh, Tommy, before I ask my question, I just have to tell you, um, you mentioned your um, red Chevy Chevette. Yeah. I, I too had a red Chevy Chevette yes. <laughs> and I took it into the um, service department one time because there was this obnoxious rattling that was going on in, in the back end. And uh, I got there and the head of the service department said to me, and I quote, Kathy, what do you want made in Japan with beer cans? <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's a my great description. That's, that's <laughs> my that's my Chevy Chevette Chevy Chevette story. That but anyway, awesome. did yours rattle in the back end? I tell you, it was yeah, it was Listen, an interesting. <laughs> I'm I'm a two Chevette owner. Like, oh my. I wrecked Whoa. my first Chevette when I was 16, driving and kissing my girlfriend at the same time. <laughs> then I got another Chevette. Yeah. So <laughs> That There's is no rock, rock and roll. And roll. Yeah. Didn't yeah. didn't learn a thing. Uh, nope. You're like a John Mellencamp song come to life. <laughs> really, really. Well, listen. My question revolves around as one who has who's way older than you two are, but who also grew up in the church. Um, did the idea for this movie, the family camp idea, was that like, well, this is a no brainer. We're going to make a movie and we're going to zero in on this because, man, the you know, the the stuff is endless in this topic. Or when I think about life in the church, it's like, oh, my gosh, there's just so many places that you could go. But so where we, how, how did the idea to zero in on camp? Yeah, it's one, that's a great question. And two, thank you for thinking that we are intelligent enough to think through that. Um, <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is, uh, this was the brainchild of the uh, co-writer and director, Brian Cates. Um, he, he literally in about a, oh, I don't know, Ed, what, probably a 20, 48 hour period, uh, wrote out the, the, the first draft of this wow. and, and shared it with us. And, you know, we looked at it and we're like, man, this, this is good, you know? 
And then all, we all started, got in there. Um, and, um, uh, he, he did the heavy lifting with, uh, with our, our lead writer, Renee Gutteridge, who's so gifted and talented. And then we just kept going draft after draft after draft until we ended up with something that we went, this is really funny. And this mm -hmm. has something for everybody, like from, you know, we like to say from eight to 80, you know, and then the six-year-olds get mad. So from, you got well, <laughs> two to 200, but the 200 year olds don't get as much out of it, but yeah, it's, you know, so that, that's where it really came from. Mm. I, kn I knew in my own church, I knew that obnoxious guy. <laughs> <laughs> I had one. Yeah, I had one. Only one. <laughs> Only one that I knew really well. <laughs> oh, yeah. George well, and, and the, the cast that you guys brought together, I mean, really impressive especially um i was impressed with the uh, with the young actors yeah i mean how well they did i where where do they come from is that close to home people or they were they were all auditions um there you know we were you know tommy and i pretty much have lived in our little bubble for probably you know for all, for all this time doing our things. And we would bring on different people for some of our videos that we do for churches. But this was a, yeah, this was a full on audition. They all have agents, um, you know, so we don't even know that world. And it was little by little, just people auditioning and getting callbacks and uh, them forming, uh, forming this great, great team. And these, all these kids are just really, really good. Yeah. Hmm. Very, they they very really good. were uh, in particular, the teenage girl just was, yeah. Oh, real chops. I mean, just like oh. DC is so gifted, so talented. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I would love to take two steps back because uh, just give us the premise of, of the film is Eddie. You play a character named Eddie, Tommy, you play <laughs> Tommy. We're not starting strong in the creativity department, but from there it, it does improve. <laughs> But tell us about the premise of the story. What's 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 a one less there? thing to have to try and remember. Yeah, for right. Listen, yeah. that's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. That's that was right. what you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. We uh, yeah, we we did that on purpose, too, because uh, everywhere we go, you know, because our videos are in churches that we go places and they'll go, hey, how do I know you? I know I know you. You you know, so they see us on the screen, but it's not like those videos go. Hey, it's a skit guy's video, Tommy and Eddie. So <laughs> we, we decided to really just kind of brand ourselves and let people know who we are, even after this thing is over. Um, but with that, it's uh, I am, I'm, a, I'm a very overly religious character um, who cares probably more about image than I uh, and people pleasing than I really do. Maybe the care and fostering of my uh, family. Really? And, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that was character. a thing. <laughs> That's a thing. Yeah. Um, my, my wife, you, you find out in the, in the movie that um, she's pretty much lost her voice because of Eddie Sanders uh control and, and image, you know, of, of how they convey the religiosity in the church. Um, and Tommy's character is kind of that person that, you know, goes to Christmas and Easter only, you know, the CEO, so to speak. Um, and his wife and family may go a little bit, but they probably go without him a lot, too, you know, because he's playing golf and doing other things. So these two families uh, go to family camp and end up having to share a yurt together, which is really a glorified cabin. And so you got the odd couple, you got the great outdoors, you got you got all those great, uh, you know, different types of uh film tropes in there to uh create comedy and stuff it was a lot of fun it was they learned together and each one the dads aren't bumbling idiots the kids aren't smarter than the parents and the and the wives don't get to come in and you know have it all together and go here you idiot this is what here just take these three things and you know macgyver it so to speak so everyone has stuff that they're unpacking and having to deal with and you know families can be messy but we are God's masterpiece and you see all that work together in a beautiful way through the comedy, you know? Yeah. That's great. It, it did, um, did, as you shot it, is it pretty true to script? Did you guys have any improvised moments or like, Oh, oh, oh I have an idea. You know, it's very true to script, but there were, there's several moments in there. Um, there's a scene in uh, where we're crossing a river and at one point, the director just said, you guys go for it. And so we just made up stuff. There's a scene that involved 
some bees and, um, and, uh, th- that was all improv. Uh, most of that came out of Eddie's brain. And so there's, there's those moments, uh, where that's in there, you know, but for the most part, if you were to read the script, you'd go, okay, they followed the story and, and got it really close. Yeah. But with that, Matthew, yeah. uh, I mean, there, there was 14 revisions. So if you read the first <laughs> right. and you, and even the week up to, you would find 14 revisions too. how much that's changed. amazing. The like yeah. first draft, they all die at the end. It's like, this is a little Hamlet for me, guys. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we got to let some of them live. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, we're not going to get a yeah. sequel like this, guys. This, it's, <laughs> guys, it's a genuinely funny comedy. It's called Family Camp. It's, it's a broad comedy. It's a classic. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Caddyshack, a little bit of Great Outdoors, even some like Dumb and Dumber moments of just over-the-top comedy. It's not church comedy. It's not like, okay, I'll laugh because of... <laughs> just wants me to laugh that's a compliment yeah there's some bad stuff out there and guys this isn't it we are talking to tommy woodard and eddie james and we will be right back listening to Steve Brown, etc. Bless your heart. By the way, do you get our weekly email? No, listen, no pressure, but <laughs> I, I think you'll like it. I do. It's called Key Life Connection. And it's a small thing we do to remind you that God's not mad at his children. While you're thinking about it, go to keylife.org slash subscribe. Hey guys, um, Steve Brown is not here today, obviously. So he asked me just to, to make sure that y'all are saved. <laughs> <laughs> If he were here, he would say, I'm not sure you're saved, but um, <laughs> um, I'm, I don't know if they've told you this ahead of time, but um, I'm in the concert production business. I do staging, lighting, sound, stuff like that. And I have been completely slammed. Um, so I have the pleasure of going into this completely blind. I've not seen the film. I can't wait to see the film. Um, it sounds like it's going to be just a, a tearjerker out the laughs. So um, with that, and being from the production, tell us tell us some of, of like making it. There's a, the set had to be hilarious, like the whole time. Oh man! Did y'all get it, anything done? Did you finally finish the film? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, they, and were you saved when it was over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was uh, first of all, Jinx. Like by looking at you when you were like, uh, "Yeah, I do concerts." I was like, "Oh, do you?" <laughs> <laughs> I was going to so pick up something with AT&T account. or something. Or did right? Leonard Skinner yeah. missing a band member? <laughs> yeah. Banker. <gasps> Definitely a banker. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was a blast. I mean, Eddie and I, since we actually filmed this two years ago. Um, wow. We, and, and, yeah. Wow. It, yeah. So for the last two years, we pretty much look at each other and go, when, when do we get to go back? Like, because it was the, it was the funnest. It was, if you've ever had a dream, like the, the audacious dream, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to play in the NBA or, you know, I'm going to, you know, fill in the blank, you know, um, that was this dream, you know, and, and it's, it's so, so every moment on set was just the best, you know, and yeah, we laughed a ton. Uh, my buddy Eddie got in trouble for laughing. Uh, <laughs> like we had so much fun. That's great. Are you, are you guys thinking about, a uh, a revival, a uh, <laughs> sequel? <word. laughs> that was, that was the best church word looking <laughs> for a movie word. Yeah. Uh, Yes, we're always thinking about revival. I think the church needs it. Thank you, though. <laughs> <laughs> we would, uh, to answer your question, we would, we would love it if uh, if the movie does well and that kind of stuff. It'd be great to do something else to where you know we don't get caught up in the Ernest goes to camp and Ernest goes to you know uh, <laughs> vacation brain. and Ernest goes to the safari and but it would be great to do something totally different and then come back and do like. Uh, just like the vacation movies or something like that, you know, it always has family, but it is family missions or 
family Christmas. You know, I think there's a lot to do with these characters, but it would be great to do something else just so we don't, you know, it's not, oh, it's the family camp guys, you know, type thing instead of the skit yeah. guys. So, but yeah, it would be, I think there's a lot to unravel with, with these, uh, with these families it can be a lot of fun throughout the, throughout the decade. Just make sure every, uh, uh, inst- uh version of the movie of, of the, like the f- vacation movies, you gotta have a different set of kids every single time. Just like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that, right. I don't, well, yeah. And, and uh, you know, you gotta figure out a way to get the beaver on the airplane going to the uh, mission trip and oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. that was great. Yeah. He, he, he was the star of the show my he gosh so the yeah he so cute was. so very funny yeah. hey matthew uh yeah. you know you talk about revisions the that that beaver it was a woodpecker at first so oh. it, it, <laughs> it's it it morphed somewhere in revision i don't know seven eight nine his age wanted too much. So you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it was well, a woodpecker at some point. Yeah. That's Such great. a pain in the neck with those. Always, you know. always go with the fur, man. People love that. I think, that's I, awesome. I think beavers make the movie. That's. That's. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 <laughs> so where did you guys shoot this? Because I hope they gave you a, a, a fixed production center because it's absolutely gorgeous. And you're like, where is that? I want to go now. It looks <laughs> stunning. <laughs> yes. You would love it. It is called Scenic Guthrie, Oklahoma, um, and it is <laughs> you. You would be shocked uh, if you went there. You'd be like, "No, you guys did not make this here," you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the production guys just crushed it. Um, th- this what, what I love about this movie was it was shot in a time when this we literally filmed it at a camp at a Christian camp. They couldn't do camp that summer. And we were able to come in and bless them, you know, by using their facilities, you know, and helping them out financially. And then they were able to help us out by giving us a place to film. So the whole thing is filmed in one spot. All of the footage is from Oklahoma. I mean, you know, when it talks about being in the Washita mountains, you know, those sweeping shots that you see are shots from the the Washita mountains and stuff. That's amazing. How long was production? How long did you guys shoot this thing? A month, Ed? Yeah. 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 Wow. Absolutely amazing, guys, that you guys shot this thing and 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 in such a smart way. And the timing, the timing just, you know, is 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 um just a God thing that that just kind of connected like that. And yeah. here we have this movie. And again, we talk about it all the time, even a crummy movie that you see on Netflix, you're like, that was terrible. So many things had to align just perfectly for that crummy movie to show up on your screen. <laughs> You're right. I, I love that God see soft bet to smile on this one. This is not a crummy movie. This is really great. And something we can maybe talk about later, but just to mention it here while we have a second, you know, there's some dramatic moments too. And I don't, this does not come across as offensive. You guys have dramatic chops and it, uh. that surprised me. I'm like, oh shoot. Oh, somebody's been going <laughs> to class. You guys turned it Somebody on. Somebody learned to putt. Hit me right in the fields, man. Oh, Guys, if you're laughing, awesome. laughing, listening to this show, you are going to be really laughing watching this movie. It's called Family Camp. It's at, uh, it just opened in theaters. Go check it out. We will be right back. Thanks for hanging out with us on Steve Brown, et cetera. And by the way, if you didn't know, you can actually watch this show on our Key Life YouTube channel, where we are now approaching 7,000 subscribers. What's that? Oh, how many does the skit guys have? Uh, you know, 230,000. But that doesn't, you know, it's not about the numbers. It's about the quality. So, <laughs> you know what? Let's not even go down that road. Let's just just go to youtube.com slash Key Life Network and uh, start pounding that subscribe button. You brought it up, Matthew. What were you thinking? Uh, did I? <laughs> Raging jealousy. Yeah, that's, that's oh <laughs> gosh, I know it's not pretty, is it? <laughs> no, guys, ha- guys, how important is it to actually go see the film while it's while it's in the theater? It's huge uh, to go see while it's in the theater. Um, we we have the honor and the privilege to to make the. Uh, the first faith-based family-friendly comedy that's in theaters, um, hitting 900, 900 theaters across the country. Wow! wow. Uh, if it if it does well, it'll open up to more theaters. So that's why the 
that first weekend, uh, whenever this comes out, I, I would just encourage you to go grab a ticket. You, you help move the needle for, cause here's, here's the, it sounds like a cliche, but it's not a cliche. The people in Hollywood, the people, the people that hold the purse strings, the people that put Dr. Strange and Firestarter and Downton Abbey and Maverick all in a month, they are watching what makes money and what moves the needle. They're going to be blown away if Family Camp, this movie, this faith-based, family-friendly comedy, you know, whoa, what, what, what's this movie? So that, that's, what, that's what your dollars do. But there is nothing better than the sounds that we've heard from uh, the premier audiences that have gone to see this. Little kids to adults all laughing together. Um, it has been a beautiful, beautiful sound because if you take off the word faith-based and just family-friendly comedy, there are none. There's there's cartoons and there's superhero movies. And even those you have to be you, you got to get on the app and just make sure that this is OK. There's no bait and switch with this movie. Uh, families can grandparents, kids can all come to this movie and really enjoy it. Yeah. I, you know, I'd add to that, you know, as we were making the movie, you know, uh, it, it, while it was being you know produced, we saw a few rough cuts and we would watch that on our TV and you're really like, Oh gosh, okay. That's okay. You know, but then once we were able to go into a theater and watch it with people, it was a game changer. I mean, there are, you know, Matthew, you talked about where did we film that? It's beautiful. There's some sweeping shots that are just gorgeous that you're not mm -hmm. going to, you know, you're not going to pick it up if you're watching it on your TV, but also come on. We've been cooped up for two years with our families, binge watching and eating stale microwave popcorn. Like this is just a great opportunity to get out with your family, to laugh together and to have a great time. Yeah. And movie business, they have a, a phrase four quadrant, four quad. So male, female, young, old, this really does genuinely hit that. And, and, and what you guys said about the scarcity of family friendly stuff is so true. I don't know how many times we're watching or want to watch a, a, a film. We have four kids on all under 13 and you've got to scour the stuff because there could be, uh, there's, there's one studio that makes family movies. I don't want to name names. I'll just say the two words. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> makes great films. And then in the middle, you're like, why, why, <laughs> why did you put that in there? And this is, this is genuinely safe for everybody. And, they'll enjoy it. Yeah. The whole idea. Yeah. Matthew, you bring up a great point. And Eddie and I've talked about this several times, especially when we started leaning towards making the movie. And that is as, as believers, we will lower our standards to be entertained mm -hmm. and we will watch stuff that at the end of the day, we go, oh, I don't know if I should have watched that, but I just wanted to be entertained. Our desire was to make a movie that a non-believer would go, I don't care that it's Christian. It's really funny. And, and I'm going to go see it, you know? And that was one of the goals behind this movie was how do you make something that is so funny, so entertaining that somebody will want to see it, even though they may not be a believer. Yeah. And, and with that, uh, everything that we do for, for the believers, we, because we are saved, Jinx, we, we have given our lives. Just to truth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just, just we'll yeah. question. We, we, we are, are, but okay. Uh, and, and being pastors, we, 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 we say we're pastors more than pranksters, um, at the end of the day, um, because we know comedy is so hard. Um, we, we, we did, we were doing comedy in churches when no one would laugh. Yeah. We have been able to get to not a got to, but a get to, to see the evolution of people laughing in church, like family nights. And it's good. Our backs would sweat. You're up there doing a skit in big church and no one's laughing. This killed at youth group. Right. Why isn't this working here? And it could be audience appropriate and everything. And no one's laughing because it was, it was irreverent. You, you, you couldn't, you, you weren't supposed to laugh. So we've been able to see that, but everything that we have has humor, heart and him, the three H's humor, heart, him. And when we do our short films, we will look at those three things and go, there's, there's good laughs. There's a lot of heart. Oh, wait. Okay. Now how do, and it, like we did in high school, how do we weave in the God stuff? And this film has that it has humor, heart, him, I would also add another H we get to allow the parents and the grandparents and whoever else to leave that theater, go, go to the theaters. You get to be the heroes. Mm -hmm. We've set you up for great car talks. We've said, we've set it up. We've set it up for you 
to be able to be the facilitator of when they're quoting a line and stuff like that. The God stuff will happen. You just got to be right there ready for it. We're going to tee it up for you, for you to be the heroes for those God conversations to happen. That's fantastic. And it is there. And and when it is there, you guys have a deft touch because it's not forced. It's not like, okay, comedy's fun and everything, but let's talk about Jesus now. You're like, okay. (laughs) Have you guys seen that change? That that kind of, you know, frozen, chosen kind of like, oh, is it okay to laugh? I don't, mm hmm. (laughs) Yes. If people lose and gotten it now. Yeah. Over the years, it has changed. I mean, when we started doing this in the late eighties, it really was, we'd, we'd walk away and people would be, man, that's so funny. And we're like, we thought you were dead, you know, like, <laughs> like it was crazy. And, and Matthew, to your point, we were talking to, um, uh, I, I guess it's just a film reviewer the other day, who's not necessarily a believer. And one of the things that she said was, she said, I kept waiting for that heavy handed message that always hits me in the face in these movies. And she said, you guys, it was never there. Like, like the messages were just, they just flowed throughout. And the only person that preaches in this movie is the pastor, you know? And, and so that was one of our goals. We, we didn't want that moment that, Oh, here's the sermon. Okay. You know, now's a good time to go to the restroom, you know, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Not, not the classic Billy Graham kind of approach. There's a, I feel like there's a comedic hip, a Hippocratic oath. You know, there's a Hippocratic oath to first do no harm. It's like, I know your intentions are good, but first do not bore. Yeah. You got it. That's the buy-in guys. Pull that yeah. off. Then we'll talk about how to infuse it with this Christian worldview. And yeah. um, you guys have, have done that beautifully guys. Congratulations on this film. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Truly a, an achievement. So excited that it's getting this wide release. That's no small thing at all um roadside attractions major major player major distributor um this is really exciting can't wait to see how it performs really can't wait to see what you guys do next uh it looks like this thing is working so yeah if i was your guidance counselor i'd say keep keep at it guys (laughs) (laughs) i know you talked about the rodeo clown thing but let's just just (laughs) stay here and patient with it and encouragement for that yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) guys we have been talking and laughing with tommy woodard and Eddie James, they are the skit guys. Their movie is called Family Camp. Go to familycampmovie.com to see the trailer and most importantly, to buy the tickets and go buy some popcorn and have a real, real good time with your family. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Watching and listening to Steve Brown, etc. What a great hour with Tommy Woodard and Eddie James. I love comedy. I love talking to comedy people. I love learning uh, about comedy. Um, talking to them reminded me of a good friend of mine, Claire Sarah. She's a screenwriter, um, actress, podcaster uh, out in uh, Los Angeles. She her background coming up was uh, through improv, and she taught me the kind of the concept that drives all of the improv scenes that you ever see. It's this concept called uh, yes and. So you're, you're performing with your, uh, your comedy partner and they do something and then it's your turn to say something. And that concept is yes. And so yes, as in, uh, I accept what you just handed to me and, and as in, here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to say something, do something, move somewhere to, uh, to try to constructively add to what came before. And I think there's something for us there as believers, because we're all writing our own stories because God has given us free will, but you know, at the same time in a mysterious kind of way, um, God is involved as well. Of course he's writing his larger story. So God blesses us with a child and we say, yes, and I'm going to be the best parent I can be. And God gives us a promotion and we say, yes, and I'm going to work hard and honor God in my career. But then the plot twists sometimes and we get handed something that we didn't ask for. And we do not want there's sickness or suffering or, or death, or maybe there's just a hurt that comes with, uh, without any answers. And suddenly that, yes, it's not as quick. And certainly the, and the part where I make my next move, that's, that's nowhere to be seen. And I know this is a weird way to add uh, an hour where we've been kind of yucking it up, but 
I know there's somebody listening who has not had a reason to laugh or even smile for a long time. And if that's you, I wonder if you would do this. Would you just ask God for the ability to say yes? Would you ask him for that power that you don't have that power to accept what has happened, what has come before? My hunch is I think he'll do that for you. And that and part where you move forward, I feel like I feel like that'll follow at the right time in his timing because he wants your story to keep going to Kathy, who do we have for our next guest? Next week is very, very different from this week. We have Dr. Greg Lanier. Uh, His book is titled old made new, a guide to the new Testament use of the old Testament. He's an associate professor of new Testament at uh, a seminary and talk about going from one yeah one thing to another mm-hmm. but that to, we keep you hopping here on i'm gonna Steve have to Brown, take off my propeller hat my propeller beanie we went from summer camp to seminary <laughs> that's right we're <laughs> gonna get j- we're gonna get jinx ordained that's right oh my goodness i'm gonna learn something whether i Start like start a gofundme account for that <laughs> exactly <laughs> guys thank you so much we love you we appreciate you thanks for hanging out with us on steve brown etc we look forward to seeing you next time until that time remember be safe and stay dangerous.